Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I want to talk about the Bach chorales today. The Bach chorales, because today, the 21st of March, is Bach's birthday. At least it's the day that I choose to celebrate Bach's birthday. It's sort of, that's the old style date. Most people would say it's the 31st now. But ba as far as Bach was concerned, his birthday was the 21st of March. Let's look at some chorales. I love the chorales for a number of reasons. You've heard me talk about them before. Happy birthday, Bach. <laughs> Bach is dead. If he was alive, he'd be 337. He'll be 338 today. I'm recording this the day or two before. So, enormous impact on Western music theory, right? One of the biggest impacts he has had is on how we deal with counterpoint, how melodies are supported by other independent melodic lines that sort of weave together to create chords. Functional harmony grows out of counterpoint. And uh, in the old days, they had this thing that was called the cantus firmus. Basically think of it as a bass melody. From that bass melody, all this other stuff grew. So I showed it at the beginning, but this book of 371 chorales springboards off those cantus firmi, canti firmi. I don't know how to do plural in Latin because I'm a poorly educated musician, but their in-depth looks at these cantus firmi, <laughs> these songs, and um, they're kind of genius. I play Bach chorales every day. The page that I like the most, according to my notes, is this one. <laughs> I'm just going to play the whole page now, um, and then we'll go back and we'll pick apart maybe just one of them. And I'm, do I'm doing this more as a celebration of Bach himself. Now, you don't have to subject yourself to this. It may not be worth it for you. For me, it is. This is what I do every day, and it's helped me a lot. On to number 60. I'm not going to do repeats. We'll just blow right through them. This is in D major.
Number 62 is next. This is in B minor. Finally, number 63, Nanru and Alivalda, all is quiet in the woods. I'm pretty sure that when we look at what I've played, what I've recorded there, we'll find um, some clams, mistakes. I will occasionally, when I'm sight reading, just not play a note if I can't quite get to it, just so that I can make things work. But I do so love this music. Well, let's dig in. Maybe we can figure out which one to analyze in more detail. Let's look at number 59. It's the first in the group that I played, and it's in G minor, two flats. I like to look at these um, chorales in harmonic phrases. The first phrase begins here and kind of goes to here. Let's play it in phrases and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Here's the first phrase. It starts in G minor and winds up on the D. The D is the five of G. And really, it's like G, and then it's two chord, A minor, seven flat five, and then a little diminished, I love this moment, back to the G minor before landing on the D. It really uh, is just kind of a one five moment. Very easy, straightforward. Bach is saying, this is where we live in this piece. Do we stay there? Let's go on. So we're going to pick up from here and go to this fermata, from fermata to fermata. Fermata means held. Well, we wound up on B-flat major and got there in a really interesting way. The first thing, the D takes us back to G minor, that uh, two chord, diminished seven chord. Definitely a B flat major. And then this beautiful moment here, this is a sort of a B flat seven moving down to absolutely E flat major. And then this beautiful moment is that E flat minor. I think we, that's what we have to say. Back to B flat major. E diminished, which is like the top of a C7 chord, which is the 5 of uh, F. F sus, there's the 3rd, there's the 7th, down we go. We were talking about uh, suspensions and prepared dissonances, and here we can see Bach at his um, just geniusy best uh, do, <laughs> doing that for us. Um, the, the tones that live importantly within previous chords like this B flat wind up being 
suspensions. I just love that. Also, the way these individual lines create um, vertical motion within the chord or um, a descending line, this beautiful chromatic descending line which pushes us back to F. Just so lovely. Let's do the next phrase. So we're going to begin here on G minor and end here on B flat major. Let's see how, how we get there. some beautiful suspensions and passing chords there. Let's take a look at them. G minor. You could analyze this as uh, C minor 6 or maybe uh, A minor 7 flat 5. I, I would say it's a kind of an A minor 7 flat 5 because the next chord here reads very much like an A7 flat 9. It's a jazz chord, Bach. And that, of course, resolves to D minor because A is the 5 of D. More D to B flat major to E flat major. And I love this moment here. Bach has an F in this chord, and the F appears again in the E flat chord as a prepared dissonance, which resolves downward to the E flat. And then uh, the E-flat appears as a dissonance to the F chord. A uh, string of prepared dissonances, a string of, if you look at it, seconds. We have... Oh, just gorgeous. And let's finish it up. Here we go, a B-flat chord, and we know we're going to end on G major, the parallel major to where we started. Okay, from the B-flat chord... B flat, F sharp diminished, which is like a D7 chord, isn't it? And of course, that goes to G minor. An absolute A7 chord. There's uh, to the C sharp in the bass. D7, A is the 5 of D, resolving to G major. We started off in G minor and we wound up in G major. Let's play the whole thing and say goodnight. Happy birthday, Bach. Thanks for the chorales. I play chorales every day. I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.